All right, everybody. What we have here is the Predator 212 Hemi model. And uh, what I've done here, I'm running this engine in, the, in a, uh, a circle track dirt cart. And we're running it in, in the box stock class. And uh, what that means is you're not allowed to put any of these uh, hopped up performance parts on it. You're supposed to take it out of the box the way it is and run it. Well, it seems like everybody I know has taken the governors off of it, and I've done the same, and some people can still pull away from me. So now i got to catch up with them. So I'm still following the rules. I am taking this motor. I'm not adding anything to it performance-wise. It's going to have the stock cam, the stock rod, the stock piston, and the stock crank. So everything in that category, oh, and the stock carburetor, so, and the stock muffler. So everything about it is still going to be cosmetically looking stock. The only thing I'm going to change, I'm putting some what they call heavy duty 10.8 springs. Since the springs in this stock are supposed to be 10.8, I'm going to put these in there. They say they're supposed to, to gain a little bit of power, but for I think 7 or 8 bucks, you know, you can't go wrong. Might as well try them out and see what you get. Uh, the stock springs in this motor float around 53 to 5500 RPM, so you can't really get any more than that out of the stock. Now what I've done here to try to gain a little bit of horsepower is I took the stock rod here, and uh, if you ever take one apart, there's four little pins that are on here, I guess from the mold. I took all those pins out, I ground it all smooth, I took all the casting channels off of this, all the casting channels off of this side. Now. <clears throat> on most connecting rods all this around here is nice and smooth now this was all rough this was all just rough aluminum cast aluminum like like this part is here and so was this this surface area right here that will ride on the side of the journals here was all just rough cast aluminum it wasn't smooth so what I did I took some uh, some 1500 grit sandpaper right there I laid it on concrete and I just rubbed this right there nice and flat against it that way I could smooth up that edge I didn't go into in the inside of the journal because we all know that that's precise but the edge of this right here we want to make sure that's nice and smooth the same goes for this and the same goes for the other side. This is nice and smooth now. The bottom of the cap is nice and smooth. I smoothed this up a little bit, made it a little bit sharper, and then uh, I smoothed this up. As far as the oil, the oil intake right there, I smoothed that up. That had some burrs in it. You know, uh, it comes from the factory that way, but you know, they don't come from the factory thinking you're going to run the dog shit out of them. But they seem to do pretty darn good. Now, as far as the piston. That was another story. If you can see, see that scratch right there? What it was, there was a piece of metal embedded. You can see that tiny little dot. There was a piece of steel or something embedded in that aluminum. I had to get a razor blade and try to cut that piece of steel out of there. It scarred the piston up pretty severely. It looks worse in the video, actually, but I'm glad you can see it. Um, it scarred the piston up more than it did the cylinder wall. Um, I, I don't feel like I need to hone the cylinder, but um, this motor had never ran. I bought it from Harbor Freight. It sat in the box. I opened it up. I disassembled it, and that's it. That's the little bit it ran from the factory when they tested it. That's what they did. Now, another thing I did, I drilled some oil holes in the oil galley here. I drilled one there, I drilled one there, I drilled one there, and I drilled one there. Because all they do to lubricate the skirt is have that ugly square hole there, and that ugly, that ugly little square hole there. And then <clears throat> what I did, I went on the inside here, I cleaned all the casting up, I tried to smooth it out as best I could with, uh, I think it was uh, some 180 grit, and then I went down to 220 grit. Um, it's just some little honing tools. Um, what I really use to get into it real good, if I can find it over here, is this bad boy right here. Everybody needs to get one. Uh, they're they're uh, what carbide tipped. They're really really good for aluminum. The aluminum ones you're gonna get uh, these big big gouge teeth, and the steel ones that that grind steel are gonna look like this. They're really really fine. Uh, I don't like those. I like the ones for the steel. I mean, I like the ones for the aluminum. Now, that that has lightened up the piston. Not a lot, but a little bit. That's lightened up the rod. Not a lot, but a little bit. Every little bit counts. 
Now the uh, the spark plugs here, when you set them up side by side, the auto light is supposed to gain you a little bit of horsepower. And the reason being is down there at the bottom when you look at it, there's a whole lot more metal right there at the bottom. So when you take that little bit of metal and you add that to the inside of the combustion chamber, that will basically decrease the, the, the combustion chamber size. Not dramatically, but enough to gain a little bit of a horsepower. They say that uh, just changing the spark plug on, uh, on the animal motors uh, that people run, that they're gaining like uh, three quarters of horsepower. And that is pretty severe when you talk about just adding a spark plug to the situation. And for six bucks, you can't beat it. Even if it only gives you a quarter of a horsepower, that's a little bit more than everybody else had. Now, another thing I did, this gear right here, this runs your plastic gear inside your motor that runs your uh, governor. It was slid on here and it was pressed right on to that ring right there. So all I did when that sits right there, I just tapped here with a screwdriver and a hammer and tapped here with a screwdriver with a hammer and it just wiggled, wiggled, wiggled. And it might take, you know, 10 or 15 tries to get it off, but tap it twice here, tap it twice here, tap it twice here, tap it twice here, and it'll, it'll slide off that little thing. And what that is, that is decreasing your rotational weight. If you can decrease the amount of rotational weight inside the engine, the engine will rev quicker, faster, and, you know, considerably a little bit more horsepower. So I got a little bit of the rotating weight off the crankshaft. That won't hurt it a bit because, you know, the, the, the governor's not inside the engine anymore. Now, another thing I did, I took, uh, I took my, my grinder there and I poured it out the inside of these holes. Uh, before, when I took the valves out, I could not get my finger from the inside of here to stick out of where the valve is. Uh, now that I've cleaned it all out, I can actually get my finger and stick it in there and actually stick my finger all the way out through when the valves are out. So I had, uh, I've opened them up considerably so and uh, I, I took a pretty good amount of metal out of there. Uh, I had a big old pile in the floor last night when I did it. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully that will help produce a little bit better airflow. Um, I, I kind of just saw the images of what the stage two heads look like and tried to copy it myself. It's not the first time I've done, you know, my own homemade little porting job, but you know, it can't hurt it. All it can do is help. So why not? It's only a hundred dollar engine, right? Um, and another thing I noticed that I was kind of freaking out the, what is that? That would be your intake side, your intake side valve spring for anybody who ever takes one apart. There is a, a, uh, a valve seal, a valve guide seal right there. There is not one on the exhaust side. You can see it's just the valve and then it's that little C clip, that metal clip, and then it just goes in that hole. There is a rubber, there's a rubber oil gasket right there to wipe the oil off the intake side, but there's not one on the exhaust side. I looked for an hour last night on the ground thinking I'd lost that thing, but apparently they only put one on the intake side. I'm guessing because this will have vacuum sucking air in, which in turn could suck oil in, and this side is always under pressure, pushing exhaust out, so it might push a little bit out of this to where the oil would never fall into it, it's pushing some out. So I guess that's why they did that that way. I really don't know. Um, the head gasket, they make a 10, what are they, 10 thousandths head gasket. This would be your stock one, which is a 40 thousandths. <clears throat> um, I'm, I don't know whether to change it or not. I have it, there are only like five dollars so all i have in this motor right now with everything here is like i think 22 bucks so i've got a five dollar six dollar head gasket i've got a six dollar spark plug i have a two dollar and fifty cent jet and i've got a eight dollar pair of springs and that's all i've really bought to make this thing make a little bit more power now as far as uh, oil and additives and stuff and breaking the oil in this is a, a Lucas product. It's great for uh, your engine break-in. It has a, uh, a high amount of zinc added to it, which helps the, uh, the engine and all of, its, all of its valve train and everything break in <clears throat> to, where, uh, to where everything does, you know, works in the right way. Um, I make my own little concoction as far as assembling the engine. 
big cars you, you use this this is a little thick to have a non-pressurized system you know so i mix a little bit of the synthetic mix a little bit of that and a little bit of that and and i put that on my parts before i assemble it that way it gives it a little bit of lubrication protection um <clears throat> another thing is you see this product here called nmf it's an ionic friction reducer let me read you a little passage here about it it says the natural state in machines is a bonding which is positive and negative electrical relationship which draws parts together in a harmful wear and causes residue to adhere to the parts nmf converts the relationship into one which is a repelling negative and negative if you take all these parts of metal and think all right this on an ionic level this might be negatively charged and, and the pin might be positively charged. Well, like on a magnet, you have a negative and a positive side. They, they attract to one another. When you add the NMF to your system, it, it somehow, I don't really understand it. I can read this passage to you, but it makes everything negatively charged to where the parts do no longer, on an atomic level, they no longer want to, to come together. They both have a negative part and two negative sides of a magnet will repel one another. Uh, it says, although NMF doesn't employ a magnetic field, magnets offer a useful analogy. So it's an analogy to understand it by. Opposite charges uh, attract the same charges repel. NMF molecules generate the same charging by releasing electrons when they come into contact with a mechanical or fluid frictional field, like the inside of an engine. It's rotating all these metal parts and... Uh, it creates that field. Now, here are, this is what sold it on this. Uh, I watched a bunch of videos on it. Uh, Team 31, Morgan Hill, California. Uh, the engine temperature dropped from 198 degrees to 180 degrees when added in NMF to the engine. The optimum batteries racing, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Our transmission temperature dropped from 182 degrees Fahrenheit to 160 degrees Fahrenheit when added 